Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And I thank you for joining us again this week as, uh, as we continue into our spring weather in this part of North Dakota and, and the planting's uh, going full, full blast and lots of things are happening. But the most important thing that I'd like for happen to everybody is that Jesus Christ affects your life. And, and that's what we're all about. Uh, anyway, today, before we begin, uh, I'd like to remind you of our announcement you can find us on Facebook and YouTube under Vicar John. You can find our website, vicarjohn.com. You have to type that into your browser. That's the top line on your on your uh, on your phone, not the second one, uh, because you won't find it there. Anyway, uh, any time during the, the service, you can push the pause button and play music, uh, hymns, uh, praise songs, whatever. Uh, there's so many of them out there on, on uh, various places, but uh, uh, just just go find them. And, and when you need the music, just play it. And it's so wonderful. Some of the suggestions for this week are, Lord, I lift your name on high. Awesome God. Savior like a shepherd lead us. And peace like a river. Uh, so anyway, please do that. Also, in a moment, we'll have a time of prayer. And you'll be able to push the pause button and go into a time of prayer, which is so very, very important. And uh, for all of us. Uh, no matter how long you've been a Christian, it's so important. Uh, our title for today's uh, uh, sermon is How to Be One of the Richest People in the World. Okay, How to Be One of the Richest People in the World. Um, now we'll have uh, the, uh, the ringing in the hour of worship as I bring it here. Praise the Lord for that. Let us open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for, for slowing us down in the middle of, of uh, our busy lives and, and uh, enabling us to stop and worship you, uh, whether this is uh, Sunday morning for you or whenever. Uh, just uh, we thank you, Lord, for, for, for bringing this broadcast to people, and we just praise you. And we ask that you put the Holy Spirit upon us today as we come to worship you and only you. And if there's any bad spirits among us, just cast them out so that we can do this. This. We praise you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our uh, proverb this week comes from Proverbs 27, 12. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. Wise words, wise words. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 97, verses 10 through 12. Let those who love the Lord hate evil. For he guards the lives of the faithful of his faithful ones. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is shed upon the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. Wonderful, wonderful words. Great words. And now we come to our time of prayer and, and God moments. I want you to remember uh, uh, to be thinking about uh, all that you see, see. And there's so much more to see in this country anyway. Uh, now that spring is being, uh, here, as the, the crops are starting to grow, and, and there's young uh, wild animals and, and lots of different things uh, where God has been working. God has been working, and this is uh, such a joy to see uh, all the time. And remember that, because that's how we learn to pray continuously. Whatever you see, uh, tie it into God and how He is doing this. Uh, now let's go into our prayer time, and we'll pause here in a moment. O wondrous and all-knowing Lord, keeper of all people and things, great and small, we praise you for all the children of the world, and we ask for help in guiding them to walk with you. We pray this in the name of our ascended Lord Jesus Christ. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button and go into a time of prayer. Oh, well, gracious Lord, we, we thank you so much, Lord, for all these things that you give us, Lord. And, and uh, they are great. They are small everything you, we have that you have given to us, Lord. And, and as we look about our world today, we see uh, countries torn apart by war once again, as, as we've never been able to get along, Lord, as with other people. And I'm thinking of the war in Israel uh, today as it's uh, blowing up uh, like crazy. And, and the war in this country of, of uh, good versus evil. And, and uh, Lord, help those that are evil to quit thinking that they're good. 
Lord, help us to find that way to, to show them that their, their evil is not good and, and you are the only good, Lord. Help us to, to show these people your love, Lord, and what, what it's really all about, Lord. And we just thank you that you give us this love and help us to share it. And now we'd like to hold up some people to you, Lord, and ask them to bless them in ways that are pleasing to you. We're thinking of the hurting and poor throughout the world, uh, the poor, and uh, especially in the war-torn countries now. We have uh, that happening once again as if it ever stopped, Lord, you know that. Uh, we ask that you be with our leaders and the leaders throughout the world, Lord, and uh, help them and guide them, Lord. We ask that you be with uh, our troops, wherever they may be. We ask that you be with uh, our communities, Lord, as... as uh, as things are happening, as schools coming, uh, winding down and, and all kinds of things are happening, Lord, just uh, help keep us together and bring us back again next week, Lord. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for all these things, Lord. And, and there's many, many other things on our minds, Lord. And, and you know what they are, Lord. And we ask that you uh, uh, bless each and every one and answer each and every one in ways that are pleasing to you, Lord. We just praise you for this love that you give us, this love that never ends, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture lesson uh, comes from Revelation once again, Revelation 22. It's just the last few verses of the Bible, uh, 12 through uh, 21. Jesus says, Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you to... to, to I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let them who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let them come. Whoever wishes, let them take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add him to him the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share of the tree of life and in the holy city, which is described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we just thank you so much for all these things, and we ask the, word, that you, the words of my mouth are your words, and they fall upon open ears and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There have been times in my life when I have been accused of faulty thinking, and generally these people have been right. Uh, it seems that we see our own mistakes long after others see them. I wanted today's message to tie in a little with the seniors, whether in high school or college or wherever, of the community who will be starting a new phase in their lives. Well, I looked and I looked for something and I found it, but, and it was right in front of me all the time. It's at the very end of the Bible. Uh, what what could be a better what what could be a better way to, to to look at things and the final advice and support that Jesus or God gives us from the Bible. This is a book that when we finish reading it, we should be able to start out our new our lives our new lives whether we are young or old. And this is exactly what the seniors in this area and all areas will be doing. They are starting out new.
So here we go again for the third time in the past few weeks where I will be preaching from Revelation after I said I don't preach from there very often. You can't believe me, I guess. I don't know. Today we read where Jesus is leaving us with this book that has all the information that we will ever need to have a fulfilled life. Let's see if there's anything there, not only for the seniors, but for all of us. Do you remember last week when I uh, asked the question, do you, know, do you know without a shadow of doubt where you will spend eternity? Well, Chris Gowan tells the story of a preacher who asked a very similar question. He asked, how many here today want to go to heaven? And uh, you can raise your hand if you're sitting there at home or whatever. Uh, the instant response of the congregation was that, you know, everyone's hand went up, everyone except one elderly man. The preacher asked him, said, sir, don't you want to go to heaven? Oh, yes, the man replied. I just thought you were talking about right now. Uh, I would guess that everyone here wants to go to heaven, uh, but maybe just not today. Uh, this type of thinking reminds me, reminded me of the hurricanes we've had off the Gulf and Atlantic coast over the past few years. There has been uh, uh, so much damage that you really cannot imagine it unless you ha have seen it firsthand. Uh, with our modern technology, we were warned fairly far in advance for all of these storms. Uh, there were many people who boarded up their places, got supplies, and evacuated. But there were many uh, other folks who didn't take these warnings seriously and didn't get ready. People died because of this. These people are like the people we have uh, today who ignore God's word. There are a lot of people, and maybe some of them are watching this today, who feel that there's a lot of time left to turn to God. They are going to have some so-called fun first. So what happens if your heart stops tomorrow? What happens? What happens if you get in a car accident and are killed instantly? You don't have the time that you think you have. Jesus has warned us that we are to come to him. He warns us ahead of time, but when the time comes, we will not know it until it's too late. Uh, there's something else going on here also. Many people postpone walking with God until they get a little older. Now, I think this is stinking thinking at its very lowest level. Did you know that if you aren't firmly established in your walk with Jesus by the age 14, chances are you never will. I beat the odds uh, when I started my walk at age 40, and I know there's many people like this too. There is always hope, no matter how old you are, but don't postpone your walk any longer. Jesus is always there, but the time will come when it is too late. Uh, we have a God who loves us tremendously, but he, will, he, he is also a God of judgment. The choice is yours, so don't be, please don't be too late. The first thing I would like to bring up here is when Jesus says, Behold, I am coming soon. Now this is probably a great comfort for John. You see, John was getting to be a very old man by this time. He had been banished to the island of Patmos. He is uh, stuck there in his old age. There's no nursing home or assisted living for John. Uh, these had to be very hard times for an old man. So he would uh, take great comfort in that Jesus is coming soon. On a personal uh, level, Jesus was coming to John soon. He was getting towards the end of his life. He had been very faithful for many years. Soon he would be able to rest in the arms of Jesus. This has to be a great comfort also to all of us. Uh, every day we live, every day that we live is another day closer to when we will be with Jesus. He is there waiting for us in this place where there's no pain, no death, and no sorrow. So John is talking on a personal level here. But he's also talking on a more general level. Jesus is coming back soon for all humanity. We have to remember that a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day for Jesus. In other words, there's really no time in heaven. No time. Uh, therefore, we have to be patient and know that Jesus will be coming back to this world, and when he does, things will happen.
One of the things that he says that will happen is that we will be rewarded if we are faithful. Sometimes uh, I think we get a little sidetracked on, on this. We often confuse uh, the rewards of God with the things that we want. Okay, This has nothing to do with your want or wish list for life. Uh, Chances are you will not be rewarded with a new car, or a new house, or new anything. Uh, this isn't what he's talking about. He is talking of the rewards that are so good. They are so good that you cannot even begin to imagine them. They are out of this world. If you stop and think about this for a minute, it really, this world really isn't very nice. Every day we have problems and trouble. We cannot get away from Satan in heaven Things will be very different. I cannot even begin to imagine what it'll be like without Satan dragging me down all the time. So, you will get rewarded if you are faithful. But what uh, about those people who aren't faithful? What will they get? They will be outside of heaven, and they are dogs. Uh, so you say, so what's wrong with being a dog, right? Uh, after all, they get fed every day and they, they sleep pretty much all the time and, and they get pampered a lot. I remember uh, a dog we used to have named Sparky. He, was, he had it so nice, he didn't even have to jump up on the couch or chairs or laps. We would always lift him up. Yeah, he was a little bit spoiled, but he was a good dog. Anyway, that's how we picture a dog. But this isn't what John is talking about here. The Jews hated dogs. They considered them to be unclean, and they couldn't even touch one. The dogs that John is referring to are, are pretty much on their own, so they might be wild or feral. So... Some of you might remember these types of dogs as you were growing up. When I was growing up, it seemed that uh, every other farm out in the country had mean dogs like this. Uh, most of them uh, uh, were a pretty good size, and they probably, uh, I always thought they were some sort of cross of a collie and a shepherd or something like that. Uh, I always thought that they would just as soon tear you up as look at you. Uh, we hated those dogs, and the Jews hated all these dogs. John tells us that these people or dogs who are outside of heaven had practiced, listen now, magic, sexual immorality, and murder. Okay? They worshiped idols and loved every falsehood. These people were very vile, filthy creatures. It sounds like many people in this country today. Uh, this is the last thing that God is telling us before he finishes the book. The Bible. Therefore, this stuff is important. Listen to this and don't do these things. These are the things that will keep you from heaven. These are the things that will keep you in agony, absolute agony for eternity. God knows the temptations we have. Remember that he lived here for 33 years in the form of Jesus. He knows how we want uh, to look he knows how we want to look at people of the opposite sex in a wrong way. He knows our love for money and worldly success. He knows how we love power. He knows all these things, and, and he knows all these things will corrupt us. And still, listen now, still he wants to walk alongside of you and take you to heaven, even when you are totally unfit. I don't know about you, but this is the type of God I'm going to follow. I'm not worthy at all, and he still wants to walk with me. Then Jesus tells us why we should be doing these things. He uh, tells the ancient readers and us that uh, he sent John, an angel, with all this information. The angel tells us that Jesus is the root of David and the bright morning star. This is the ancient way of telling us that he is the God of the Old and New Testaments. He is the fulfillment of all prophecies. He is the way to salvation. He will give us the water of life. Most of you know uh, pretty much where I stand on things. You, you know that I will follow the Bible and what, what it says as best I can. Uh, you know I have very little regard for what our society tells us to do, especially when it comes to 
moral issues. Our country has slowly become totally immoral. Uh, here we have Jesus closing out the Bible with moral teachings that don't go with what our society is telling us today. If you are starting out new in your life, follow Jesus. Okay, I can guarantee that your life will be far, far, far better if you do go with Jesus than if you don't. Okay? I think that one of the most alluring terms we've ever come up with to lead us away from God is something we call political correctness. It, a lot of it is just common sense that we, we should use. We are supposed to treat everyone like we want to be treated, so this you know, shouldn't be a problem. But, but, now listen, our society and Satan want us not to tell people when they are doing things against God. They want us to turn our heads and pretend that everything is okay. But that is not what Jesus did. Uh, when the Pharisees were wrong, he would march right up to them and tell them. He did it in a nice way, but he told them. Uh, he would get in their face in a nice way. But our world tells us that we are to keep quiet and things will go away. Don't make waves. Some political correctness is okay, but for the most part, it's a political agenda for someone. For example, uh, we're supposed to keep our mouths shut about abortion, which I strongly oppose. Uh, society tells us to be quiet about it in the hope that it'll go away. But it doesn't. There have been bills presented by our representatives where they can kill babies up to 10 days old. What will be next? We also have laws that allow people, older people to die if they choose. If we don't stop this type of thing, soon the government will set up standards for, use, for the use of life-saving techniques. Uh, people are gonna be left out in the cold. And this is exactly what was initially in that first, that last health care bill. Please remember that our government has had very, very little success in running anything. These types of things are terrible, and they are not how we are to treat our neighbor. If anything, these things reek of political correctness. It's our job to take a stand on these issues from the Bible. We can do this because Jesus leaves us with the authority, his authority. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus never stood by and was a wimp. He was one of the most aggressive men I've ever read about. He wants us to be aggressive also through the Holy Spirit uh, when people and governments are breaking his laws. Please understand that his laws are much, much more important than our laws. And finally, we are warned not to add or subtract from the Bible. When Jehovah's Witness come to your door with their Bible, remember that they changed it. They will suffer for this. The same way with the Mormons, as they too have changed the Bible so it reads the way they want it to read. The Quran never was a Bible and it never will be a Bible. If you study its history, it's the writings of a very irrational man, not God. He is also super violent. Uh, we, have, we have the real deal when we have the Bible and that's what we have. Read it, use it, love it. And finally, Jesus says again, yes, I am coming soon. Then he leaves us with his grace. Wow. Isn't that not wonderful? These are some of the things that Jesus had on his mind when he ascended into heaven. These are the things that we should have in mind as you start out new journeys in your life, whether it's through graduation or job change or anything. These are the things that you should have in mind all the time. If you are to be successful in your life in this world and the next, it all begins with following Jesus. Uh, this is illustrated in a story I found uh, from Sermon Central of a boy named James who had the wildest desire, and I listened, to be the most famous manufacturer and, and salesman of cheese in the world. Now, this is, a, this is a true story. He planned on becoming rich and famous by making and selling cheese. He began with a bug, buggy pulled by a horse named Paddy. After making the cheese, he would load his wagon and, and Paddy would uh, drive, him and he and Paddy would drive the streets of Chicago to sell cheese. Months went by and the young boy began to despair because he was working hard and long hours 
and not making any money. Finally, one day, he pulled the pony to a stop and he began to talk to him. He said, Patty, there is something wrong. We are not doing it right. I'm afraid uh, we have turned things around and our priorities are not where they ought to be. Maybe, maybe we ought to serve God and place Him first in our lives. So J James drove home and made a covenant for, that for the rest of his life, he would serve God and then do as the work as directed by God. Uh, many years later, in his manhood, he stood as, a, as the Sunday school superintendent at the North Star Baptist Church in Chicago, and he said, I would rather be a member of this church than head the largest corporation in America. My first job is serving Jesus, okay? So every time you take a bite of Philadelphia cream cheese, sip a cup of Maxwell House, drink Kool-Aid, eat DiGiorno pizza, have Grey Poupon on a sandwich, stir up some cream of wheat, eat some of that jiggly jello, break an Oreo uh, to get at the frosty in the middle, or have some stovetop dressing. Remember a boy, his pony named Patty, and the promise that James L. Kraft made to serve God and work as he directed. There are many, 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 many stories like this where men and women have first given their lives to God and then followed him. These people are some of the most successful in the world. And I would put myself in this category as I feel I am one of the richest people in the world. Jesus loves you so much that he will give and give and give and give to you if you would just serve him and do as he directs. I praise the Lord for all he has done. And thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, for, for this Bible. And, and uh, we thank you for the uh, wonderful advice and, and things we should be doing that you give, not only all through the Bible, especially today as we looked at the very end, Lord. We just thank you for this, Lord. And we just ask that you help us uh, to give this uh, good news to others, especially to our young people, our graduates, or, or people moving, uh, doing whatever, Lord. Help us to, to get your word to them. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our worship service for this week. I thank you for joining us. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May, he, may his face shine upon you as you go out into this wonderful, wonderful world he made just for you, spreading his great joy. Go in God's peace. Thank you. And amen.